you like treasure? Yeah, I mean, who doesn't? Who doesn't love treasure? <laughs> How about storms? I mean, it is the name of my channel, so yeah, sure. Math? Yeah? Do you like math? Oh, no, God, no. Who wants to do that? Well, if you like any of those things, maybe you'll like Treasure Math Storm, an edutainment title released by The Learning Company in 1992. Early edutainment, man. There's nothing quite like it. Tons of games like this were released throughout the 90s and early 2000s, and they really got more interesting when they started leveraging CD-ROMs to show video and fully voice-acted characters. Games like The Oregon Trail, Carmen Sandiego, and The Clue Finders, in their many iterations, stick out in the minds of those of us who played them as kids for a reason. Not only did they allow us to spend more time playing computer games because they were deemed as educational, but they were also memorable experiences. Edutainment these days seems to have migrated to iPad apps and online sites, and I don't know, it doesn't seem like it's of the same quality. It all seems a bit shovel-wary to me. This could also be the fact that computer time isn't the reward it used to be since every student is required to have a computer just to do their curriculum. But I digress. Treasure Math Storm was part of a multi-part series of games dubbed the Super Solvers, in which you took on the role of a nameless hero to do educational things. This is comparable to Clint Eastwood in the Man With No Name trilogy, but without guns, grit, or coolness. Well, maybe it isn't like Clint at all. The main character in this game looks like four kids in a coat pretending to be a person. I mean, who walks like this? Unlike some later edutainment games, which had loads of media goodness baked in, Treasure Math Storm is more basic. It only comes on two little old floppy disks, though, so what do you expect? There is an enhanced version, but hey, this is DOS Storm, and it's DOS Sember as I'm writing this, so we're going to play the DOS version. Speaking of which, if you find a copy of this game online, it is literally my copy of the game I leaked onto an Abandonware site back in the day. It even has my dead brother's name and the sign-in screen haunting the game for all eternity. Cool. Anyway, let's play some Treasure Math Storm. The game opens with a cool ad-lib rendition of Box Invention Number 8 and shows you a story. The story, like many Super Solvers games, involves the antagonist, the master of mischief, doing something mildly annoying you need to stop. This time he has a magical weather machine that has frozen the mountain, which has made all the clocks go crazy and scales not work or something. Basically, he's caused Y2K with a mild Michigan winter, and now it's up to you to find all the treasures in the mountain, which will somehow stop him. The gameplay here follows what I like to call the edutainment loop, found in many games of this type. What do I mean by that? Well, this, like most edutainment games, you do a thing, you do another thing, you might do a few more things, and then you restart and do it all over again. Thus, the edutainment loop. It's much like the water cycle, but less water and more edutainment. So the main objective in this game is achieved by collecting treasures. To do this, you have to mug elves by catching them in your net. Unlike normal people, when they get mugged, these elves will ask you math problems. And if you get them right, they will give you a clue along with some money. The clue boils down to the number of snowballs you need to place at these random piles of snowballs to generate a treasure. So after this, you need to progress to the next level of the mountain. But how do you do that? You do this by reading an analog clock and inputting the correct time on a digital one. This will give you pickaxes, which you need four of to climb up the mountain. Like any puzzle in this game, you can also continue to solve these problems for money, which you can use to either buy more nets to catch elves or items you need to go up the mountain. Interestingly, you can use this loophole to beat the game by only doing one activity and just using the store to buy items to bypass puzzles you don't want to do. However, all puzzles in the game will scale to your assumed skill level and get more difficult as you do them more. You also need to pay an exact change in the store, which is slow and probably not the speedrun strat you're looking for. 
But anyway, moving up the mountain, we yet again collect more treasures by mugging elves and doing the snowball thing. To move up the mountain yet again, this time we have to collect parts to build a catapult. To do this, we solve a scale puzzle in a place called the Gold Room. This was probably my favorite activity as a kid, and it involves balancing a scale by placing equal weight on both sides. It gets more difficult later by introducing unknown numbers, but I always like to farm money here so I could bypass that stupid time jerkwad. So with the catapult built, we descend up the mountain yet again, and now we have to go to the Crystal Caves, which has some random dude in his jammies. This is a simple counting and grouping puzzle we need to do in order to gather the four ladders to get to the top of a castle. After this, a Yeti gives us a number sequence puzzle we have to figure out, and we've completed the edutainment loop. After a little animation, you are rewarded with a little prize that will be displayed in your treasure room. And every time you go up the mountain, you get a new treasure to add to this room, which is a nice little touch that lets you see your progress. But after that, you do the same thing around 50 times to rank up and complete the game, all the while the mathing increases in difficulty. After the training level, they do introduce these annoying snowball guys that steal your money, but it's pretty much the same thing over and over. And if you're thinking that's repetitive, you're right, but you have to remember this game isn't designed to be binged in one sitting. It was made for short sessions, maybe on the family computer, or the time you had in the computer lab at school. For me, gamifying something I considered horrible like math made it far more interesting, despite the repetitive nature of it. I remember my dad trying to help me understand math and telling me it was like a cookbook, but what he didn't understand is that I didn't cook very well either. That isn't to say math games like this or later Operation Neptune didn't frustrate me either, but it being a game gave me more determination than pen and paper ever did. For that, Treasure Math Storm holds a special place in my heart, and I always get kind of excited when I hear that music. And maybe it didn't make me good at math, but I like to think it didn't make me any worse at it either. Well, I was hoping to get this video out as a fun little distraction for December at the end of the year, but I'm guessing it's January now. But that doesn't really matter. Special thanks to everyone who supported me this year, like my members on screen, or just the folks that comment or subscribe and actually watch my videos. I've had a great year here on the tube, and I'll be glad to see you guys all again in 2025.